Thanks, Sham, for having me. It's super surreal to be doing this testimonial because, yeah, I'd been following you guys for quite a while before I started working with you. And it was just like so far away to actually be sitting here, no medication, symptom free after five years of illness. When I first got diagnosed with colitis, I had pancolitis. So my whole colon was ulcered. Um, I remember when I went in, the gastro that did the procedure, he asked like why I was there that day. And I said, oh, I'm going to the toilet about 10 times a day, diarrhea, blood, really, really bad stomach cramps. Um, I had also had rashes all over my face and all over my arms. Um, and I said, I've been told that I have IBS. Anyway, I, I wake up from the colonoscopy and he looks at me and he goes, Emily, you don't have IBS, you have inflammatory bowel disease and you're going to be on medication for the rest of your life. How many times have we heard that before as well? <laughs> you're going to be on medication I for mean, the rest of just, your life. Nothing we can do. Yeah. You know, there's no cure or whatever. Well, yeah, there is no medicine, no co medicine medicinal cure. Of course, I was given the foam steroid enemas that I had to do morning and night. It's going to be really real. Who wants to shove something up your bum twice a day? How is that? You don't, you don't, it's uncomprehendable to have to be doing that. Like it's not normal. I just couldn't comprehend that. Eat like the food that I was eating wasn't affecting me. Like how can that make sense? I changed to a different doctor and then he immediately put me on prednisone, which was my first time taking the oral steroids. Um, and after about two, three weeks, I was symptom free and I felt incredible because I had so much energy. But obviously prednisone is not, you can't stay on that long term. So then you come off it and then the symptoms return, right? So the symptoms returned when I came off it and they came back even harder. So each time I was coming off a medication, I would be hit with symptoms even harder than than before and then I started looking into nutritionists and naturopaths and seeing if they could potentially help me because I was kind of losing a bit of trust in doctors um the nutritionist put me on a paleo diet so he said paleo diets are amazing at healing autoimmune diseases so I was eating so much meat he was telling me to eat meat for breakfast as well and telling me to eat awful oh. um was like you need to eat meat because it will heal your colon because of the protein, it will heal the ulcers. So I was annihilating the meat. Like I've, ne I've never eaten that much meat in my life, even before I had colitis, February 2022. Um, I started taking as a thioprene and I did not tolerate it. My I was so nauseous. I couldn't eat. I felt so dissociated um, and I like went back to my doctor. I said, look, these are the side effects I'm having. And he said, okay, these side effects, you're obviously not tolerating the side effects. So we now have to start the injectables. So straight from that went to infliximab. And he looked me in the eye and said, infliximab is a miracle drug. 80% um, of my patients that are on it have achieved remission and have been in remission for years. And if I had ulcerative colitis, this is the drug that I'd want to be on. It's going to save your life. It's going to give you your life back. Trust me. When I had the, the scope after failing in Fliximab, I said to my doctor, what am I doing wrong? Are you sure it's not my diet? Is it my job? Because I'm, I'm a chartered accountant. So I have a, a, like a relatively stressful job. Is it my lifestyle? Is it the, my relationships? Why am I so sick? Is there anything else that I can do? And he said to me, no, there's nothing else you can do. It's not your fault. It's just the disease. If anything, it's my fault that I'm not doing a good enough job for you. So <laughs> then he said, the only option we have left for you is a drug called Zeljans, which is a relatively new drug. And the side effects of Zeljans, if you look it up, are so bad. The, the main one is risk of death. <laughs> like literally it says on the website, risk of death. <laughs> um, death, thrombosis, leukemia, lymphoma, blood clots, heart attack. And I'm 26. So seeing something like that, I was like, what has my life come to? Like I don't, why am I being controlled 
by the medical industry and like it was just the absolute rock bottom point of my journey and I said to him well what if I try Zelgens and Zelgens doesn't work and then he said well then we have to remove your colon there's no other option left and he said but it's okay because this disease is benign so once we cut out your colon you'll be cured he trivialized it so much Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's testimonial time once again, and I am super, super excited to share Emily's journey with you all. Um, Emily has done some amazing work uh, with herself. Um, she's just, you know, excelled at learning how to heal and grow, um, not only physically, but mentally. And I'm just super excited to let her break her journey down and explain to you guys the importance of how to grow as a human being and, and to really learn about your body and how it can actually self-heal um, and the incredible ways that it can do that and and. You know, she's had first-hand experience of self-healing and uh, what made the most sense to her was that her body could do all the healing work um, instead of taking drugs and medications and supplements and all sorts of things. So I'm going to hand it over to Emily and she's going to just sort of start off with her journey and her diagnosis uh, and then we'll probably go on to some of the healing parts and obviously as you guys know break it down into segments and um, give you as much information as we can to potentially inspire you guys that are watching to do this yourselves as well so i'm gonna give it to you um emily and and just start off with uh your journey and and your diagnosis and then we'll go from there perfect Thanks, Sham, for having me. It's super surreal to be doing this testimonial because, yeah, I'd been following you guys for quite a while before I started working with you and it was just, like, so far away to actually be sitting here, no medication, symptom-free after five years of illness and symptoms. So my journey started back in 2018 Um it was actually after I had a procedure to be diagnosed with endometriosis. So I also have endometriosis, probably should also um, preface that. But I, after that procedure, I started seeing blood in my stool. And this was, I still remember, it was July 2018. And I didn't have any other symptoms at that point. So I kind of left it. And then like a couple months later, it was happening more frequently. So I went to my GP and told her what was happening and then she ended up um, doing an inspection which is like lovely we all love that and she said that I had a fissure which was strange because I, I didn't have any pain it was just the blood and she just said yeah you just have a fissure sent me on my way and then I guess the blood kind of was on and off for a few more months um, and then in October I got horrific food poisoning like the worst food poisoning that I'd ever experienced in my life um and it kind of after that like I just like went back to normal like my health was fine um and then it wasn't until the start of 2019 that I started suffering with chronic constipation and I'd never dealt with constipation in my life I always had like normal bowel movements I used to go once a day they were formed um they were perfect so it was super strange I hadn't changed my diet I didn't think really anything had changed much in my lifestyle. Like I was just living the same lifestyle. Um, so I just hoped that it would go away, but it, it didn't go away. It got worse. Um, and with the constipation, I was still bleeding heavily. Um, I used to take laxatives and they didn't even work, um, which was very alarming. I ended up being hospitalised two to three times in 2019 because I was so constipated and no laxatives were working that they would have to use an enema. And one of the times I was hospitalised, the enema didn't even work. So they admitted me. Mm. Um, and 
they said that they were going to do an examination under anaesthetic. So essentially that means that they were just going to put a camera into my rectum to see where the bleeding was coming from. So I remember that day I was admitted and I fasted all day to then be seen by a general surgeon who looked at me and said, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just a a young female who's stressed um, and you need to eat more fibre. So this was like six months into being chronically constipated, bleeding. The constipation also caused a lot of stomach cramps because I was so blocked up. So I was dismissed. They then said to me, oh, we're just going to do an x-ray to actually check that you're constipated because it might just be gas. So I had an x-ray which showed my whole colon was blocked and then they gave me four different types of laxatives to clear me out and then sent me home. So they didn't... yeah, and just to just to sort of clarify as well, there was no um, or what you were eating uh, back then was the standard Australian diet, right? Like you weren't sort of focusing on diet at all, and that's why you potentially were blocked up. Yeah, so I'm Italian for reference, and I thought that I ate a really healthy diet, which, like most people think, consists of meat and veg and fruit. Mm. So I thought that my diet was fine and I'd never had any other issues and I was eating the same. Mm. Um, So it was just super strange that all of a sudden I was dealing with these chronic gut issues. And when I was telling like the doctors what was going on, they just kept saying, oh, it's just because you're stressed. It's just because you're a young female. Like they never, they just, I was so dismissed and gaslit because I was a female and I, and I had anxiety, depression. It was never like, let's do a colonoscopy. I actually asked them, why aren't we doing a colonoscopy or an endoscopy? And they said, oh, it's too risky at your age because nothing will actually be wrong with you anyway. So there's no point. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so I guess um, following from that point, that was about August 2018, I continued to deal with the constipation. The only thing that would relieve it was prune juice. Oh, wow. And it was it was extremely painful. Like mm. nothing was working. I tried. Then I tried having psyllium husk to try and relieve it. That was kind of working. Um, and I started seeing other GPs and nutritionists trying to figure out what was wrong with me. They just said that I had IBS. Um, I was put on different, like a low FODMAP diet, which didn't do anything because there was no fiber in a low FODMAP diet. And it wasn't until December 2019 when I went through a very, very traumatic breakup that my symptoms just spun out of control and the pain that I was experiencing was just like I wouldn't want my worst enemy to go Mm. through it. Like I was bent over on the floor every hour. I was passing so much blood. I was just not coping like I couldn't work I was in in so much pain so at that point um my mum and dad were like this is not stress like how can you be in this much pain and bleeding this much from stress so we ended up going to this GP that my mum like had just recently started seeing and had um a high opinion of Mm. and we went to her and we told her what was happening and then she finally validated me and said Yes, stress can do things to you, but having this much blood coming out is not normal. And she referred me for a scope and I I think it was like a few days and I went and had the scope. And um, I remember when I went in, the gastro that did the procedure, he asked like why I was there that day. And I said, oh, I'm going to the toilet about 10 times a day, diarrhea, blood, really, really bad stomach cramps. Um, I had also had rashes all over my face and all over my arms. Um, and I said, I've been told that I have IBS. Anyway, I, w- I wake up from the colonoscopy and he looks at me and he goes, Emily, you don't have IBS, you have inflammatory bowel disease and you're going to be on medication for the rest of your life. Jeez. And he, he gen- 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 genuinely looked like it was like a death sentence. <laughs> How many times have we heard that before as well? <laughs> You're going to be on medication I for mean, the rest of your life. Nothing we can do. Yeah. You know, there's no cure or whatever. Well, yeah, there is no medicine, no co- medicine, medicinal cure. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, mm-hmm. that's crazy. Um, so what did you do? What did what? Did, how did you feel uh, when you were in that position? Like, I mean, for a doctor to say that it just demoralizes you. It like puts you down. Like, what what was going through your head at the time? The first symptom that I felt was relief, to be honest with you, because it had been almost two years of symptoms and no one was giving me answers and I finally knew that I wasn't insane because I gen- I, I genuinely thought that I was like having like a psychotic breakdown because no one was giving me answers. So I was relieved and I was like, oh, I finally have an answer. Now I know what to do. And, of course, I was given the foam steroid enemas that I had to do morning and night. And, and they, were, they were painful. And oh, who wants to, sh- I'm just going to be really real, who wants to shove something up your bum twice a day? How is that? You don't, you don't, it's uncomprehendable to have to be doing that. Like, it's not normal. Oh, honestly, <laughs> I, I, I did it as well when I first was in hospital. And a funny story, actually, because I got this, I think t- 10 years ago, they didn't really have like an efficient system for this and um, w- like what they do now. And that I had this like square plastic box that was attached to this big, long plastic pipe with this really sharp like edge. And and so the nurse like sort of gave me this thing and she's like, do you want me to demo it? And I'm like, Hell no. I'll, I'll try and do it myself because I don't want anyone to stick something up my bum. And yeah, yeah, it's a very, very intrusive, like the most uncomfortable feeling um, to to do something like that. And w- when you know that there's like a, another way, like you kind of think, you know, there's so many people out there that are probably doing this as well. And it's just, it's disgusting and it just feels wrong. And uh, it potentially makes you go to the bathroom more often as well because you're like your body has to get rid of it. Um, and and exactly. you know obviously, what did the doctors say? Like, oh, it will lower the inflammation that's in the rectum and and blah blah blah. And obviously, we know that that's not the answer, is it? So, I mean, there's so many people probably listening that are probably doing um, the same thing as well and going, well, I didn't have any other option. Like, this is what the doctor told me to do, and like. I mean, to be honest, I did not want to do something like that. So I actually stopped doing it. I was like, I'm not doing this. This is just horrible. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, that that was your experience being being yucky and whatnot. So, yeah, carry on. Yeah, I completely um, feel everything that you've said. And at that point, because I still had doctors on a pedestal at that point, which I very mm. soon learned that, it was just, yeah, we'll get into that later, but um I was like, I just have to do this because I want to get better. And I was also taking the, um, like, mesalazine, pentassa, um, yeah. the granules. And they said to me, your symptoms will go away in two months um, and you'll be fine and you can just keep living your life the way you want. And I said, um, I remember I was with my mum at the time and she said to, like, the, it was like a nurse that was explaining how to administer the enemas and everything and, My mum said, well, what do we, back to the diet conversation, what do we do with diet though? Like, because obviously Emily's got inflammation in her colon. Should we be eating foods that aren't irritating her? And she goes, oh, no, like the enemas will sort you out. Like if they're steroid enemas, they'll they'll heal the ulcers. You'll be fine. Just just avoid like acidic foods. But you can eat everything else because um, it's not to do with food. You'll be, yeah. Just go on your merry way and continue living the same life that you were. So I was like, oh, sweet. I'll just have to do this. They did say that I could stop the enemas after two months and then just continue on the mesalazine for the rest of my life. And I was like, oh, that doesn't actually seem too bad then. And I'll be healed. Little did I know that was just the start. So this was March 2020. That was actually the easiest point of my journey. Mm. It got, It just went downhill from there and which I can get into um, now if you want, unless you have anything else yeah. to add on that. No, I think, I mean, well, again, it's the same situation. I, I'm sure so many people have heard it themselves before that, you know, don't change anything with your food. Just keep taking the medications and, and you know, all is honky-dory. Um, and, of course, you know, you're always questioning that, you know, answer because it's like, well, 
it's something to do with my gut, you know, and, and obviously what I'm putting in my gut has caused sort of irritation and what, it, what I eat causes problems. But you're saying that, you know, the diet has nothing to do with it. It's pretty odd. So, um, mm. I mean, how many people have, you know, been told that by, by their doctors? And it's ignorance, isn't it? It's ignorance. The data is out there. The research is out there that suggests that, you know, that diet has everything to do with um, inflammatory bowel disease, to be honest especially the microbiome and um, you know who knows why these doctors aren't sort of learning more upskilling right which they should be doing mm -hmm. <laughs> so it is it is odd but hey you know that's given you the power to do what you need to and that's why you're here um, mm -hmm. sitting here talking about this <laughs> because you made those changes so yeah mm -hmm. let's let's go on to the next phase and what you decided to do next and I guess your trust in, in doctors as well. Uh, even though mm -hmm. they said this stuff to you, you still trusted them and tell us what happened next. Exactly. Just on that as well, it um, just didn't make sense to me that they were just telling me one day I got chronically ill. Like I had no other issues. Well, I had endometriosis, but like that also is another sign of toxic overload. But I just, it just, I just couldn't comprehend that eat like the food that I was eating wasn't affecting me. Like, how can that make sense? Like, why would your body at 26 just break down all of a sudden? Like, I'm so young. How does that, it just doesn't, yeah. Anyway, so um, after I started the mesalazine, so I was about, it was about six months and I, I was, I would say I was symptom free, but not really. My digestion still wasn't good. I was still getting constipated every now and then. I just wasn't um, bleeding anymore. I didn't have the mucus. I didn't have the pain, but I was still getting constipated. So it's definitely my digestion still definitely wasn't on point. And then towards the end of 2020, I ended up going through another traumatic event. It's very interesting because a lot of my flares were contributed to traumatic events and things that impacted me mentally. And I... Um, started a new job that didn't end up going as I had planned and I was working in a team with very toxic people and I had to exit that job pretty abruptly because it was causing panic attacks and things that you don't really want to be dealing with. You spend so much time at work. So I had to leave abruptly because I know I know my limit. I know if something's not serving me, I'm getting out of it. I'm not going to push through just because I have to. So I ended up leaving that job and when I exited the way that I was treated was just disgusting and surprise, I ended up with symptoms again. Um, literally the day after I ended up with blood and diarrhea again and um, I ended up changing to a different doctor because the one that diagnosed me wasn't actually a specialist with IBD. So I ended up changing doctors and he said, um, you have to go back on the enemas to clear this so I went back on the enemas and like you were saying before even when I was doing them they were just coming out straight away because my body obviously didn't like it so I was I wasn't even holding them so it wasn't doing anything so I just stopped taking them and yeah I wasn't really seeing any relief um because I wasn't addressing the root cause of why I was having the symptoms and then it was about February 2021 um, I contacted my doctor and I was like, look, I'm still sick. And he said, oh, um, he, he, he again gaslit me and he was like, oh, you probably just have a fissure. Even though I had, I'd, I had the diagnosis of ulcerative colitis, which didn't make sense. Um, and I ended up then changing to another doctor because I was like, I need help. I'm having, I'm in excruciating pain. That was the part that was the hardest the symptom that was the hardest, which I really want to raise awareness to is the pain that I was in was so debilitating. I could not even talk or like breathe properly because it was just, it took over my whole body. Like I had shivers and I couldn't even get up. Um, so I changed to a different doctor and then he immediately put me on prednisone, which was my first time taking the oral steroids. Um, and after about two, three weeks, I was symptom free and I felt incredible because I had so much energy. But obviously prednisone is not, you can't stay on that long term. So then you come off it and then the symptoms return, right? So the symptoms returned when I came off it and they came back even harder. 
So mm. each time I was coming off a medication, I would be hit with symptoms even harder than than before. So after I came off prednisone, then he put me on um, another enema, but it was like an immunosuppressant enema called tacrolimus, um, which I think you took the oral version or the, I took yeah. the oral version. Yeah. I don't, I've never actually uh, come across anyone else that's taken that um, in the time that I've been working. So that's, that's quite interesting because it's, it's a very old mm-hmm. drug. It's a, I think it was a mm-hmm. drug used on horses or something, or they tested it on horses or something. I, I did some research on it and, I looked at the side effects of that and I was like, hell no, I'm not taking this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I know. At that point, I was still putting all my faith in the doctors and I was like, they know best because, yeah. So then I was put on tacrolimus and then I started looking into nutritionists and naturopaths and seeing if they could potentially help me because I was kind of losing a bit of trust in doctors. Um, The nutritionist put me on a paleo diet. So... He said paleo diets are amazing at healing autoimmune diseases. So I was eating so much meat. He was telling me to eat meat for breakfast as well and telling me to eat offal. um, Was like you need to eat meat because it will heal your colon because of the protein. It will heal the ulcers. So I was annihilating the meat. Like I've I've never eaten that much meat in my life, even before I had colitis. So Um, I was on the tacrolimus and eating a paleo diet. And then the tacrolimus like suppressed things, of course, it didn't get to the root cause. And I was okay for a bit, um, up until the end of 2021, when I tried to come off it and I ended up being, well, I ended up presenting to emergency on boxing day that year because I was, my symptoms were so bad. Whoa. Um, and they just dosed me up with the prednisone again. (laughs) And then I had a conversation with my doctor and he said, we need to start you on oral immunosuppressants now. So as a thioprene. So then that was um, February, 2022. Um, I started taking as a thioprene and I did not tolerate it. My, I was so nauseous. I couldn't eat. I felt so dissociated. Um, And I like went back to my doctor. I said, look, these are the side effects I'm having. And he said, okay, these side effects, you're obviously not tolerating the side effects, so we now have to start the injectables. So straight from that went to infliximab. And he looked me in the eye and said, infliximab is a miracle drug. Um, 80% of my patients that are on it have achieved remission and have been in remission for years. And if I had ulcerative colitis, this is the drug that I'd want to be on. It's going to save your life. It's going to give you your life back. Trust me. Wow. Strong words. So, of course, if when, someone's, when someone tells you that something is going to give you your life back and you've been sick for almost three years with no quality of life, of course you're going to just think you're going to trust them, right? So we started the infliximab and I was in such high hopes and I did a lot of research on it and was, I actually read a book um, with a girl that has Crohn's disease. Um, It's called What Doesn't Kill You and she had been on infliximab for like three, four years and she was symptom free and like living her best life. So I I thought that was going to happen to me and I was like, I finally now have a chance to live my life again and do the things that I that I want to do. So we started the infliximab in March 2022 and I did three infusions. And on at this point in time, I was also still on the prednisone because my symptoms were just so intense. There was nothing that was working to, to just like keep it at bay. So um, that was masking things. So I I think I did three infusions and then it was about April, May 2022. And I just got hit with a massive flare up, probably like the worst flare to date, which makes sense now looking back because the amount of drugs that I was pumping into my body and the amount of meat that I was eating, no wonder my symptoms got so bad. So I ended up, yeah, going into a massive flare. I had another, I had a sigmoidoscopy. um, And 
Actually, I should also note, when I first got diagnosed with colitis, I had pan colitis, so my whole colon was ulcered. When I had the, the scope after failing in Fliximab, about 35 centimetres was ulcered and it was like severely inflamed, so it was spreading quick. And I remember I said to my doctor, what am I doing wrong? Are you sure it's not my diet? Is it my job? Because I'm I'm a chartered accountant, so I have a, a, like a relatively stressful job with deadlines and timesheets and like budgets and KPIs. So I said, is it my job? Is it my lifestyle? Is it the, my relationships? Why am I so sick? Is there anything else that I can do? And he said to me, no. There's nothing else you can do. It's not your fault. It's just the disease. If anything, it's my fault that I'm not doing a good enough job for you. So (laughs) then he said, the only option we have left for you is a drug called Zeljans, which is a relatively new drug. And the side effects of Zeljans, if you look it up, are so bad. The The main one is risk of death. Like literally it says on the website, risk of death, (laughs) Um, death, thrombosis, leukemia, lymphoma, blood clots, heart attack. And I'm 26. So seeing something like that, I was like, what has my life come to? Like, I don't, why am I being controlled by the medical industry? And like, it was just the absolute rock bottom point of my journey and I said to him well what if I try Zelgens and Zelgens doesn't work and then he said well then we have to remove your colon there's no other option left and he said but it's okay because this disease is benign so once we cut out your colon you'll be cured (sighs) he trivialized it so much oh it's so sad because you know it's not people have been put in that position they've actually gone through with some of that uh surgery and and people end up you know having ileostomies and stuff and uh, i i was also in a position where they were going to cut out some of my colon not all of it um and and just the, the thought of it now just makes me really emotional as an angry frustrated um sad because you know, where's the other alternative? Where's the where's the true alternative? Where's the hey, like maybe if you start eating more fruits and vegetables, your colon can probably like heal up. Um, with the evidence out there that fiber is so good for the gut, like, and this is 2022 we're talking about. You know, this is not like, you know, the 1950s or whatever when potentially that information wasn't available. Um, but. Yeah, it makes me really sad because some people follow through with that and uh, they're missing an organ, you know. Um, it's like you can't you can't grow it back, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's a way for good, you know, and how much of a detriment is that to your health afterwards? I guess, you know, when you're in that desperate situation, you probably want something to give you that relief and, and you know, surgeries make... A lot of dollars and uh you know and that that's one of the reasons why people doctors suggest that too um but man that's scary as well to be in that situation and and your doctor say to you well if that doesn't work then surgery it is and at that point you know when you're so lost and nothing else has worked um like what do you do you know what do you how do you feel what do you do and like again just they're literally like strangling you at this point saying if you don't do this whatever you're gonna get worse or you know you may have to do what we say um which is really sad again because we know that there's you know a possibility to to change the situation and let the body do the work um so you're in this position um zeljans it's actually a it's a new drug here in australia new zealand i think it is but in in us it's actually been used quite a lot and i have worked with someone that uh, was also on that drug and paying like crazy amount of money his insurance company was paying a lot of money for that um go figure um so 
Yeah, wow. So you were in this position and, and you were like, well, what what can I do? You know, and, and so what did you do? So I took Zeljans for about five days and then it just felt so wrong and just not the path that I was supposed to take. And I remember this specific night I picked up all my medication it was in like a bucket in my pantry and just threw it all over the floor and it just all smashed everywhere. That was just symbolic of me. Like, that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. And I had been following you guys for like, I think almost a year before. And I knew about, well, I'd I'd heard of the whole food plant-based diet and like it had been successful in healing people that had Crohn's and colitis. And then I told my parents about it and my partner, so we're just my massive support system through this time, and we started doing more research and then binge watching all your videos again and looking at the evidence. And I remember it was a date, the 8th of June, I went fully plant-based. So it's almost been a year. Um, And at this point, though, I was still on prednisone. So I went plant-based, but the prednisone also, I wasn't responding to it anymore. Mm. Um, so I'd been on it for like two, three weeks and I wasn't getting relief. So went plant-based within four days, no symptoms, completely formed bowel movements going one to two times a day, no blood. I wasn't waking up in the night anymore. My rashes cleared up and I felt like I had finally like, like found the answer. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And, and you, so yeah. And, and you started with us, I think, in April. Uh, oh, no, no, October. October, sorry. Yeah, October, yeah, yeah, yeah. October, f- October 2022. So you were plant based yeah. from around April, June. Uh, J- June, sorry, June to yeah, yeah. October. So you were already doing it before, obviously, having a consult with me as well. Um, and you were seeing some good results, which is fantastic because that's obviously what we know um, can help with, um, obviously, when you start eating more fiber. And, and I think the prednisone was helping with the plant-based diet to sort of engage whatever, to suppress whatever, but also to, obviously, when you're eating foods that are less irritable and and you know, your microbiome was probably sort of getting a little bit more, um, I guess, oomph from the fiber, uh, the bacteria. So it, it did do well for you. Um, but obviously, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, obviously, there, there's still, um, obviously, withdrawal symptoms and things like that that come with um, when you start eating cleaner and when you start giving your body the right conditions or, or if start giving your body the efficiency or you know foods that are you know less damaging to the body and therefore your body gets to do the the work that it's truly designed to do so um you started eating plant-based so what did you start eating like i mean obviously you you were doing whole food plant-based i don't think it was there was much fruit or were you doing fruit because of watching me as well yeah so i was plant whole food plant-based but i wasn't strict enough so I wasn't eating enough fruit every morning I was having oats and berries and I was having like nut butter and um cacao powder which I know like now that wasn't the best breakfast but I was having that every um day for breakfast and then like lunch and dinner was I guess kind of the same things that I'm eating now but I just was eating like I was still eating oil I was still having oils and I was still having processed foods here and there. Like I was eating quite a bit of bread and um, even like I was going out to eat quite a bit. So like obviously you don't really know what's in the ingredients, but it was all plant-based. Um, but, yeah, so then I guess I'll um, move into what happened when I came off the prednisone. So I came off the prednisone in August. So I'd been plant-based about two months And for about six weeks, I was still symptom-free. And it was probably, yeah, like the best I'd ever been, like in my colitis journey. Um, But little did I know I could have been even better. So the end of September, 
the symptoms returned and the blood returned, the frequency of bowel movements returned. So I was going about six times a day, six, seven times a day. The pain, it always for me started with the pain. It would always be burning, cramping pain. And that's when I knew something. Yeah, I was going going into another flare slash detox now, as we know it. And that's when I contacted you because I needed support. Yeah. And support so, you got. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, so yeah cool. so so what what i guess what made you pull the trigger and what made you sort of go well i need to start with these guys because you know you were doing it by yourself um and you were feeling good but you know you were in a in a flare and i and i think um what's important to also talk about is that your job at the time probably wasn't helping either and that's um you know with all the stress and stuff that you were going through which uh, you know, Emily's worked super, super hard on so many aspects of her life, not only diet, and that's what we're going to obviously cover. Um, so, yeah, what made you pull the trigger? What what made you go, right, I, I want to work with these guys? I just was at the point where I was like, I literally have nothing to lose. And it was an intuitive feeling that I knew that I was, I had found you for a reason and you were going to, I, yeah, I don't know, because I'm quite an intuitive person and I had been following you guys for so long and all the evidence in whole food plant-based and I just knew that I didn't have enough understanding of the healing process because even though I was eating whole food plant-based, I wasn't, like the symptoms returned. So I needed support from someone that had more knowledge and had more experience. And also you were lonely, weren't you? Because nobody else knows what it's like to go through with this condition and that's you know that's why i offer this as well because the the support because you know it's it is lonely like nobody nobody knows what you're going through if you if you don't have the condition you know you just don't know like what we go through emotionally and physically and the pains and the and the toilet visits and things like that so i guess that was something that you could relate with me uh, and I and I obviously gave you that, um, yeah, like uh, advice and and um, my story as well, which you know, because I also went through so much pain and and it was uh, hell for me too at one point. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's crazy when you sort of remember those days. Um, yeah, getting less and less, but. <laughs> um, yeah okay cool so um so you started with high carb health um in october um and what what did you go through because obviously it wasn't smooth sailing and um you know we went through quite a bit of um you know tough times and it's not that you haven't experienced these tough times before from your previous flares it's just it's different. It's different because there are certain things that happen for the better and then there's certain things that happen for the worse as well. So I guess talk to me and the audience about some of the things you went through uh, initially and enduring. Um, and obviously we started off with sort of a transition sort of phase. So you'd have some fruit in the morning and then we'd – would sort of be using more root vegetable based meals instead of grains and beans and legumes and stuff like that. And obviously getting rid of processed stuff. Um, how did you respond to the foods? How did you find the foods? And I guess, yeah, talk about that, that initial yep. start up and then yeah, we'll go from there. Yeah. So yeah, when I first started working with you, um, I started off with, yeah, like fruit for breakfast and I did just the smoothie um, with bananas. I loved, my, luckily, like mangoes were in season, so mangoes and dates. And then like lunch, yeah, was um, always like steamed veg or roasted veg, but obviously no oil and no like minimal, minimal salt. And then dinner, I did a soup with like chips and it was fine. I consider myself to be a very stubborn person so when I know that I have to do something or like if I want something bad enough 
and I wanted to heal so bad I would do anything so I didn't even really care like I at that point I just wanted my life back and I wanted my health back so I didn't find it difficult um I think it was maybe about two weeks after we started working together my symptoms kind of improved a bit so you said okay cool we'll now introduce some fruit for lunch um and see how that goes just obviously because fruit is so healing so the more fruit you eat yeah the more you're going to heal um but unfortunately that didn't quite go to plan because a couple of weeks later I ended up in a rapid detox um the worst symptoms I've had ever even more than other flares I was going to the bathroom 30 times a day I lost complete control of my bowels I was wearing nappies I was bedridden, I was bleeding, I was shivering, I had fevers, I had rashes all over my body. I felt like vomiting, like it was full on. Very full on, absolutely. (laughs) And it's, it's, um, you know, really, really impressive for you to go through that uh, because you learned so much about yourself, you learned so much about how to be patient, how to accept your body for what it's trying to do because ultimately you know all these symptoms are actually there's, there's a reason why that's happening it's it's not the fruit's fault it's not because you're you know you're getting sicker and your disease is getting worse it's because your body is trying to actually enact the healing process and i think you understood that really well and i think that's what that's why you're here <laughs> because you yeah. stuck to it you knew what your body was trying to do and it's very uncomfortable it's very very uncomfortable to go through that and that's why you had a you had a really good support team with your with your family and your partner which was you know which is necessary when anyone is going through this phase um and i guess the stronger you are mentally the easier it is to sort of get out of that position or to understand that position you know, that you're in. So um, a lot of people do experience that wave of detox. I mean, I definitely went through that as well. Um, it's not not to scare anyone that they're going to potentially go through that as well. It's just the more medications you take, the more immunosuppressive drugs you take, the more likely that you may be in that position where your body has these withdrawal symptoms and is going to detoxify all that poison um so if you're listening and if you're deciding to take immunosuppressant medications you know please don't i i wouldn't recommend doing that i mean for myself as well i I, you know looked at the side effects and i'm like yeah that's not for me um so yeah like do your research and um Maybe you don't have to take those meds. Maybe you can go down another route. Um, so w- when you were in that position, um, obviously you felt like giving up. You felt a lot of things. Um, and those those conversations that we had were pretty deep. Um, I remember when you were going through it, um, you were still pretty strong. Though, that, And that's what I really admired about your journey is that you – did not give up you didn't want to give up because you know you knew like where you would get to and and what you had been through you know that you knew that this was the solution because everything else didn't work uh, for you mm-hmm. so you really had to give this you know a go and obviously you know being there with you every week um just to you know coax you towards that uh it was really impressive to see you go through that and grow to be honest and and your anxiety um you know had improved so much just because of the faith and the belief and trust in yourself that you put and and worked you know on yourself with so i guess talk talk about that situation and how like you had to really pull yourself together to get through those waves of healing yeah for sure i just um have a memory from this is going to tie into like talking about the faith and stuff but a memory of when from our first consult and you said to me 
you have this disease for a reason. It's for a bigger purpose. You didn't get sick, like, for, for no reason. It's, like, essentially your superpower. And I held that with me every day. And that really grounded me every day when I, and I had so much belief in self-healing after like reading the book and all the other research that I'd done. And I, I understood now why my body was having this reaction because your body just wants to return to homeostasis. So I, I, I believed it so strongly and every day I visualized being healed and I looked at myself every day in the mirror and told myself that I was healing, that my body loved me, that it was just trying to help me get better again. And I, yeah, I just was so faithful that I would get there. And each time I would have doubt that I wasn't healing or if I was worried that it wasn't, it wasn't going to work, I just used to always, I would look at the thought in my head and acknowledge it for what it was, but then I choose not to like buy into it and I just push it to the side and I always chose to pick the better thought and the better thought was I have access to these beautiful fruits that are going to heal me. I'm working with Sham and he's got my back. I have a family that's there for me and I, and the gratitude as well got me through because, yes, I was so sick that I didn't, I felt like it, you can either, yeah, you can either succumb to it and play victim, but I chose the other route and I, I chose that it's to better me. I'm going to be so healthy now. I'm so grateful that I've been given this opportunity to grow as a person and to learn so much about my health. And I'm so young. So this is going to set me up for life. And that belief just got me through and I truly think that it was more that than the food like yes the food helps but like I said to people um when I like other people that have IBD if you are eating like a healthy diet but then you don't believe you're going to heal and you don't do the work on yourself your nervous system is so dysregulated that it will override what you're eating because your, your mind controls how you process food. If you're anxious all the time and got knots in your stomach, of course your brain's going to be sending messages to your colon to attack. But if you visualize a healthy colon and visualize your healthy self and work through your inauthenticities, you will heal. Mm. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and those are some strong words because... You've been through it. You, you you went through the worst of the worst and now you're on the other side because of the work that you've done to yourself and you continue to do the work. It's not that you stop. Um, you know, he healing is is constant. You you never lose that. Um, and that's what it, that this is what this teaches you, this whole journey. A, that's why it's a blessing because it allows you to continuously improve your life. You know, you don't just stop. Um Another thing that I would like to say is that even though you were going through some really tough times, there were like little moments where, you know, your your body did show you that, hey, you know, I am I am getting there because there were times where like I remember your your headaches um sort of went away and and, you, and the blood sometimes wasn't there in some bowel movements and when you got those moments of like hey like why is this happening i think that made you feel a little bit better about what you were doing and obviously when you you know talk to me about it i was like <laughs> you know because i'm, yeah. I'm cheering for you you know because that's that's what that's what i want when you know because i know i know that process and i know exactly what the body does um, in terms of because of my experience of going through the same situation and then you see those little wins and you're like, my body's doing this and, and you get really excited and that, that momentum is is really important. Yeah. That's what we sort of, when we talked yeah. every week, I really put the emphasis on those little moments of, you know, the body sending you these signals. For sure, yeah. When I had those um, small glimmers of hope 
with like maybe that one day there was less blood. I, yeah, really grabbed onto that and that made me, it improved my mental strength even more because I was like, this this is working. I am healing. Like I am going to get there and it just made me work harder. And like you obviously saw each week how happier, happy, much happier I was getting and like when I was going down from like 30 bow movements to 15 to 10 and then slowly like it just stopped and I was like, holy crap, I've like done it. And it, yeah, it all my visualizations and manifestations actually came true. Yep. I do want to also talk about how there were there was a point where we did need to sort of take some medications just to prevent you from going more downhill. And it was a decision that we both made um, just because I didn't want you to go back to hospital um, just to be on the safe side. And you didn't want to go back to hospital either because when the body goes through this healing, it can definitely... I put you in a position where you you do start ending getting up weak, getting weak, and and you lose a lot of sodium, um, and you and your electrolytes can can be really low, um, as and that's because you go into the bathroom so much and you're you know releasing a lot of water and fluid, um, so, you know we did take some prednisone in 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 that, uh, you know situation when you were sort of really not the best uh we tried to sort of get you through but i think we needed to take that med medication just to stabilize you um so i guess let's talk about that because again we're not against medications okay and this is what i think some people don't necessarily understand um medications are there for emergency situations they're just not needed for the rest of your life and it should be that way that, you know, we use these services for emergency situations. We don't need to use them because you were using them for such, for such a long time over and over and they weren't helping you, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and now what we were doing is using them wisely so that they can help us in a way to sort of rebound and bounce back because it can be very mentally draining. And, you know, sometimes when that doesn't help, you need a little boost and that boost can either come from medications or it can come from IV drips or, you know, vitamin IV therapy. And obviously some people don't have access to that. And you, I think you still had some prednisone lying around um, mm. and, you, and you took a smaller dosage. You didn't take the recommended dosage because you didn't want to. Uh, and you didn't want to go back to the doctor because the doctor would have said, wouldn't have agreed with what you were doing in the first place. And you made those decisions. You took control of your health, um, you know, and and you took those opportunities to say, hey, well, maybe I need to do this. And I, su I supported you on that because I don't want to see you obviously get worse and end up in a hospital. So you made that decision to take some. And how did that go? Yeah, I like that we're touching on this because I think there's a lot of shame surrounding potentially have to take potentially having to take medication again because that's the whole reason we're doing this detox is to not have to be on medication and I honestly was scared and like hesitant but I realized how sick I was and I realized I just needed something to just calm it down because my body was just in overdrive trying to eliminate all the toxins um and yeah I, I, I and then I was at peace with it because you you and um your brother obviously just made me feel better about it. And he said, look, some people do have to do this because we don't like, yeah, we don't want you to end up in hospital because then they're going to try to give you immunosuppressants. And I just wanted to avoid that at all costs. So we went on yeah, a low dose, it's like 20 milligrams, which is very low. And if, um, if I took that any other time, I would not have responded to it at all. But after literally a day, the bowel movements were cut in half. So And and then the point of responding is because you had actually done a lot of work internally to to to, to heal. And that's why the medications 
reacted to you in a in a a good way because and and at a, at a lower dosage because your body had been um away from medication for such a long time and therefore the the strength of the prednisone didn't need to be so much and it was actually quite effective um in your case and that was a good thing um that we exactly. realized that hey like you know you don't need actually as much because you've gone and done a lot of work already and it's just maybe that you know you are suppressing the symptoms just to stabilize a little bit but still continuing the food as well it's not that you weren't um but it gave you that stabilization to to really clear the mind as well to give you some hope and to and to put some some weight back on as well because obviously we you know we did lose a little bit of weight oh yeah i should touch on that <laughs> go for it yeah so yeah i when i first started working with you guys i was about 60 kilos which i think that's like 120 pounds in because yeah, I'm obviously in Australia, so we go by kilos. Um, and I got down to 44 kilos. So I lost 16 kilos mm. and I'd never been that thin and it was super scary. I felt like I was just going to like fade away. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it was important that we that we did take that low dose of prednisone um, just to stop me from dying <laughs> i thought i was gonna die but luckily no i was just being dramatic um and yeah so i think i was on it for about four weeks but like i tapered off really slowly like halved it just so that i wouldn't yeah because yeah I, I think we discussed maybe two weeks but then we then we had another discussion just to like halve each tablet so that it was just a very gradual um process like coming off it yeah and i guess yeah. You know, like if you would if you had gone to the GP, um, you know, you probably wouldn't have been able to do that, and and probably they would have told you that, or instilled so much more fear inside of you, and said to you that you know, like if you don't do this, then you're gonna do, this is gonna happen, and all sorts of you know scenarios. So, um, and and you wanted to do it by yourself, and you wanted to just not go to any other doctor or you know because you just had that faith and that was really important um and i think that strength that you had is is really important to talk about because not many people can be in that situation and and sort of pull through like i did that because i yeah did not want to go back to doctors and and medications and things like that so sometimes you know, we do need to do that um, and be strong enough to believe in ourselves and, um, you know, go through that process. So, um, yeah, like it, it, it helped, um, obviously, and uh, you got you got yourself back up and running. Um, and uh, I guess after that, um you sort of stabilized pretty well actually and and you didn't necessarily go through another wave or as bad as as you went through i mean was it was there a time where you went through again after coming off them again or i had about like i had another wave in um february but it was due to work yes i think we know right. and then that, yeah. yeah so um as I mentioned already i'm a chartered accountant so pretty stressful job, um, a lot of overtime um, expectations. And I always wanted to start my own business, like so I could just have the flexibility and um, but do things my way. And I had enough experience by this point, but I was concerned to take the leap because I was worried it wouldn't work. I had a lot of limiting beliefs. But, yeah, I ended up because um, I had three months off work when I was in my worst um, having the worst symptoms and in the the rapid detox, and then I went back to work in January when I I was symptom free by that point. I went back to work and I soon quickly realised that work was not serving me anymore, and it was still very stressful. Nothing nothing had changed, even though I tried to set boundaries with the level of work that I was being allocated and the way that I was just being treated. Um, yeah, my my boundaries were crossed, and they weren't listening to me. So. My symptoms returned. I had some blood again, increased mm. bowel movements, um, pain. The pain is always, as I've said, the worst. Like I like to use the analogy of like 
giving birth out of my colon to a devil. <laughs> wow. How painful it like I, it's just it's like yeah, it's a some people might be able to re relate too. Some people might be able to relate to that actually. I mean, yeah, I went through something yeah. similar too. Yeah. Um. So I ended up resigning and decide, decided to just take the risk and start my own business because life's too short. And the day that I resigned, the, the day, sorry, the day after I resigned, my symptoms just went away. Yeah. That was so it, that just proved to me how much it is mentally, not just what you're eating. It is so much mental and mindset and working through trauma and no longer putting yourself in situations that don't serve you anymore and that don't align with you anymore because it just it impacts us so much more than we realize yeah absolutely um, yeah it's it's very influential um as as you talked about before and um we don't necessarily recognize that as much and we we do give emphasis more on diet at times um because we're like oh the food the food can heal us and, and whatnot but um we do need to work on so many other aspects. And this is where you really took the initiative to look outside of diet and really help yourself with that. So what sort of techniques and what sort of um, practices did you start implementing um, outside of your diet on, or, or which also potentially led you to be in this position now? Yeah, so I was also no, I did have a few raw days when the symptoms came back, and I think that really helped um, clear things up quicker. But I made sure that I was doing a lot of um, more inner work and getting to the root cause of other traumas that I hadn't worked through. Um, a lot of getting out in nature and just reflecting on things. Breath work was major as well. Um, delving into breath work. And just trusting the process, I think, was major as well because I knew that I had, like, gone gotten through that other wave. So I had evidence that I was going to get through it again and I had so much trust in my body to heal. So that really, like, anchoring into that, I think, was, like, the main thing that I knew that it Correct. was fine. Yeah. It, was it always good. makes it easier when you've sort of been to a place where you feel really good um, and it, it reminds you to... Be like, no, 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 hang on a second. I've been there before. What do I need to improve this time outside of my diet? Because my diet's the same, you know. My my diet is is very much similar to what I was doing. So it's not the food that's the problem. It's like, okay, well, let's analyze what am I doing wrong in other areas of my life so I can improve on that. Uh, and that's something that, you know, we've been talking about for a while that it's – you know, you do have to look at the mind. You do have to look at things outside of your your life, you know, like relationships. The trauma that you talked about is very, very important. Uh, if you're holding on to something, if you have family issues, if you are very um, anxious, you know, that's not going to help the situation. And I think, you, like, to be, to be really, really honest with you guys, Emily was you know, has worked so hard and, and to, to see her now, uh, you know, just, it, it just, it's amazing. Cause when she first started, you know, there were times where, you know, she was second guessing some things and she was worried about her symptoms. And I sort of talked her out of that and said, look, just don't focus on the symptoms, you know, focus on the end goal, do those visualizations. And, and she actually started the, the the anxiousness and the anxiety started to get less and she just you know that that was actually a profound inner healing because the more she stopped worrying about her symptoms the more the body actually responded right yeah it's so true because again if you're obsessing over the symptoms so much you're dysregulating your nervous system and all of that tension and stress on your body is not good at all and it sends the wrong signals like when your body's trying to heal it's sending a bad bad messages to your to your colon so you really have to just catch yourself and Absolutely. just yeah trust have trust yeah that's right well that was a bit of a journey and um you know every, everybody's healing journey is is different by the way uh, the scenario and the environment's always going to be different so you may not go through what emily goes through 
Um, but just be aware that uh, you know if you do start eating more fruits and more fiber and things like that, you you may notice increased symptoms. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It doesn't mean your body is getting worse. It doesn't mean your body is attacking itself more. It doesn't mean that the disease is getting worse it means your body is trying to do the healing work and obviously that's what we're here for to guide and support you um so talk to us about your life now uh talk to us about projects that you got going as well talk to us about your business and if anyone wants accountant who lives in australia i would highly recommend <laughs> emily so talk to us about everything that's gone on after you finished with us, uh, it's been, what, a couple of months now since you finished, I think? Yeah, um, I think it was end of March. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, end of March, yeah. yeah. So talk to us about, you know, what your life is like now and how happy you are about your situation and how you're not reliant on medications anymore and you're not on medications uh, and, you, and you prefer to be that way um so yeah the floor is yours yeah sometimes i feel lost for words about how my life is now because it's better than my wildest dreams like i feel better than i did even before i had colitis um i feel so like in touch with who i actually am like i'm just being emily i'm not trying to be someone based on like what I think society should be or like society expects us to be. I have so much energy. I was, I had, I suffered with chronic fatigue as well throughout the whole um, journey and I have energy now. I, I was able to buy a house. Um, so now I have my own house. I have two cats. I have a partner who supports me so much. I've met new people that I'm really aligned with and that both believe in like, like, the whole holistic healing and they're also really in tune with spirituality um and I started my own business so like I, le I left my previous accounting job and started yeah my own um, bookkeeping advisory slash tax business and it, it was scary but it's going like a lot better than I thought and I think it's just because I'm being authentically me and I'm attracting the right people um I just feel so empowered and I'm just so grateful that I actually achieved like what I have and I don't think it's like it didn't happen overnight and I had to work extremely hard to get this so yes I'm grateful but like I know that I put in the hard work to get here so like I should receive all this because when you do work hard it does come to fruition um, and yeah, it's just the best thing ever not having to pop pills in the morning and to be able to go for a walk every morning now and meditate and just feel so grounded in my life and grateful for what colitis taught me. And as I, as I said at the start, colitis is my superpower and it brought me back to who I really should be. 100%. 100%. And it's just, it's so awesome to see you the way you are and the way you're growing uh, and, and the way that you've worked on yourself to, yeah, like overcome these issues that you were dealing with, uh, you know, in your previous years. So, um, you know, congratulations. And um, you now have a life after colitis and it's so good to, be able to say that to another person that has been able to benefit from a plant-based diet and and there's 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 other reasons for you being plant-based too it's not only for your colon it's for you know your heart your kidneys your your arteries and you know your brain yeah, endometriosis. yeah. do you want to yeah. talk a little do you want to just touch on that as well a little bit yeah so i i did lose my period throughout healing because I lost so much weight but it has come back um mm. and I wasn't even in any pain mm. and it was so light like I was the and it was crazy yeah I've only had like a couple periods since healing but it's I've seen a massive difference so I'm excited for what's to come yeah yeah I guess the longer you keep doing what you're doing 
the the healing will happen down there as well um and uh you know that's that's why the body is so amazing that you know it's not only one organ that that heals it's your whole body and and that's why we're mm-hmm. going to look at it holistically as well and uh you know every everything is connected you know all the organs talk to each other and um you know the more you talk to your body as well the the more benefits um there are so yeah, it's been amazing um, to get to know you as well and um, to see you grow through this six months. And, uh, you know, we're obviously going to be in contact very often. Um, and, you know, if you want to plug your business, feel free. Oh, yeah. Well, I do have my business. But then I also I actually, when we were talking about something I wanted to, to mention before, um, when you were saying about how lonely, like, I was and, like, how we all are in this journey. I actually created like an uh, an Instagram page where I've like documented my journey and my food that I'm eating now um, because I didn't want others to feel alone. And it's been amazing just like connecting with other people with IBD. So yeah, I have that Instagram page. It's Emily's Plant Life. And then my business, um, yeah, we'll link it below. My, my business um my Instagram, I have a website too, it's bizsense.au. We'll also link that. But yeah, I guess that's like accounting, tax advisory, bookkeeping advice. But I do have goals for that. And I really want to make that a lot like mindset focused too, because I'm just so passionate about mindset and what it does for your life. So yeah, watch this space. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see how you go as well. And, and, and that's the thing we as humans need to obviously respect each other and and uh, grow together and and feed off each other uh you know and and that's what we're doing here and that's why we set up this community as well and set up this youtube channel to allow people to get inspired to allow people to share their journeys um you know with the audience and with the world because you know if it wasn't for us being able to share this and youtube obviously uh, giving us this opportunity, um, you know, we may not be in these positions that we see ourselves in. So I'm very grateful for the knowledge that I've gained and I'm very grateful to pass on the knowledge that I've gained as well. Um, and I'm very grateful for, you know, people seeing my stuff and applying certain things that I've been talking about because we don't necessarily want to take drugs for the rest of our lives. I certainly don't. Um, and I want to try and work with myself to improve every day. And, uh, you know, I'm doing that every day. And, and like you said, it's, it's a blessing. It was a blessing for me to, to get this condition and, you know, being, being in this position for over 10 years, it's pretty amazing to, and surreal as, as you said, said, um, uh, for, for even myself and, uh, you know, obviously in the field, you know, working with others and seeing other people do well as well. And, um, you know, it's, it's inspiring for us to see you guys go through this and, um, you know, be able to heal yourselves and be able to heal so many other aspects too, not only your, your, your colon and, and work to be better. And that's the, the main thing. Like we don't, we don't want to be eating, shit food and and junk food that that leads us to negative places and you know leads us to that dark place we want to be in the light we want to eat fruit food that is going to give us that nourishment uh and here we are so yeah thanks so much and um you know it's been a pleasure working with you and i hope you found it really helpful (laughs) i think that's an understatement but you changed my life like I feel like I owe my life to you like I can't I don't have any words to not there's not enough words to thank you oh appreciate (laughs) appreciate that Emily and it's um no right back at you as well and and look you know I, I didn't suddenly you know get this condition um and and I mean I I'm just happy that I've been able to share this with others and create this platform um so that other people can benefit from it so yeah you're welcome and uh keep in touch obviously and uh one day i'll be in perth and you probably might come up here uh, to queensland so um yeah 
yeah, let's uh, wait for that day and wish you all the best and uh, we'll see you online and take care of yourself. If you have any last words, Emily, you're most welcome to say what you want to say. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I just want to reiterate to anyone that has Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, colitis that this isn't the end of your life. If anything, this is the start of your life and you have an opportunity to become the absolute best version of yourself. So don't play victim. Look at it as, yeah, the biggest blessing that you've ever received. And when you adopt that mindset, you will completely accelerate in your life. A lot of people need to hear that, you know, because there's there's a lot of victim mindset around IBD and and we we need to change that because yeah. look, e- even if even if you improve your life just by a little bit, that's enough to to what it, from what it was, you know, and that's so key. And when you see that, accept that. Um, you don't have to be a superstar. You don't have to be doing what I'm doing or doing what all these other people are doing. Just basically going to the toilet properly, you know, like or just being able to go to the toilet, you know, not fucking yeah, bust, yeah. busting and running. So yeah, it, it definitely like um, I mean, you know, it, it it's so significant yeah. and and you've changed your family's lives as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So my parents. Well, it's a bit difficult because I'm Italian, but at home they eat 100% plant-based now and my dad's coming off his blood pressure medication. My mum's feeling better. They've both lost weight. They both feel amazing and it's just like I, the whole bigger purpose thing, like I'm here to help influence other people to change their lives too. Give this video a thumbs up if you know what it's like to have colitis or Crohn's disease and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. This channel was about helping people recover from colitis and Crohn's disease. If you go to our website and fill out the health survey, you are entitled to a free 30-minute consult from anywhere in the world. We look forward to hearing from you. And always remember, there is a life after colitis and Crohn's.